All right, the GOP is now focusing on two holdouts in the grueling fight for a new House Speaker. More than a dozen votes have now been taken, and the next one is set for a little bit later tonight, as we just reported. But what happens if a new House Speaker is not elected? You know, this is really historic. Suzanne Chaud is a political science professor at North Central College and joins us to discuss this further. Thank you so much for being with us on this Friday. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, we've never seen anything like this play out, at least since we've been alive. This is the longest speaker contest in 164 years. What does this stalemate mean for Congress overall? Well, there's some immediate things that we've already seen, for example, that these members are still considered members elect because no House business can happen until the speaker is elected. So technically, they're not really representing their districts yet, which also means that there are members who aren't getting security briefings. And if this continues to go on, there could be goods and services that are not um, provided to constituents. Now, we don't expect this to go past tonight, um, but I think more symbolically what it shows is that this is the first hurdle that typically isn't a hurdle to move into the new Congress when there's a new majority. And so if we can't even get the speaker elected and move on to swearing in members, what does it mean about this new majority being able to govern and legislate for the people that voted for them? What do you think uh, is going to happen to that end, uh, this fracturing within uh, the GOP right now? We've uh, been talking for months, if not years, about uh, the uh, gridlock in Congress. Does this just exacerbate an already bad problem? I absolutely think that it does. And I will say that it didn't have to be this way, but the concessions that the Freedom Caucus have asked potential Speaker McCarthy to make are actually not strategically that smart because it makes legislating that much more difficult. So, um, you know, making it so that more amendments can be added to bills, making it so that for the debt ceiling bill has to be paired with a spending cut bill, which Republic, excuse me, Democrats have said that they're, they're, they're unwilling to do. One vote to call to vacate the uh, McCarthy as Speaker. All of those things combined mean that it's going to be very difficult for the House to pass anything, let alone get anything to the Senate for Senate Democrats to be able to maybe make something happen. So I expect this to be more paralysis than we've seen previously. And really staying on that point in terms of the friction within the party, what do you think this means for the 2024 presidential election? Yeah, this is a great question. It's never too early to talk about the next election, honestly. And uh, one of the things I think is most important to note, aside from the presidential election, is that what members of Congress have to do when they're looking to run for their next election is they have to run on a record. And especially for members who are in a newly gotten majority, they have to say they've been able to get things done. That's hard and divided government already. But with this fracture and making it even more difficult for things to get done, it's most likely that the Republicans won't have the majority again in 2024 in the House unless they can get some things actually passed. All right, Suzanne, one more question before we let you go. What is expected to change between it's 420 uh, Chicago time? This is uh, going to reboot uh, at 9 o'clock Chicago time, we understand. What is expected to change between now or this most recent vote and tonight's vote that would push Kevin McCarthy into the speaker role? Yeah, so there's two members, both of whom are expected to vote for Kevin McCarthy, who were out of D.C. and are now back in D.C. If those two members, um, Representatives Buck and Hunt, are back on, on the floor, they will vote for Kevin McCarthy. What that means, though, is that based on those who are still holding out, depending on if everyone's on the floor, it could mean that at least one Republican member who doesn't want to vote for him has to vote present. Um, it all depends on who is going to be on the floor. But what we're seeing, what we're, what we're, the signals we're getting is that tonight, Tonight, we should have a vote that does codify Kevin McCarthy as the next speaker. All right, Suzanne Chad, thank you for breaking it down. The Department of Political Science, that's where you work with North Central College. We appreciate you thank being you. here.